Hello and welcome. Today we're going to show you how to convert a VMware VMDK to a Hyper-V VHDX file and it's really, really easy. Well, kind of. The first thing you're going to need to do is hit the start button and search for turn Windows features on and off. Then you want to search for Hyper-V and select that. Once selected, hit OK. Now that will go off and install and once done it will ask you to restart. Hit restart now. Once that's done Google is your best friend. Search for Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter and install that. Now when that's done you want to load up PowerShell as administrator and then you're going to need to import the Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter module. And you do that by typing the command on the screen and hitting return or selecting it and pushing the play button at the top. I'm not going to read it all out, but if you go into the description box below, I would have pasted it there. And once you've run that, you'll be able to then run the command to convert the VMDK file to VHDX. And that will also be pasted in the description. You're going to need to replace the source path and the destination path. They are the bits in the red quotation marks. So it's the location of your existing VMDK file and where you want the VHDX file to be created. And at the end of that command, you're just specifying that it's going to be a dynamic disk and the format is VHDX, but you shouldn't need to change that. Then once you run that, you either select it and hit the play button at the top, or if you've typed it in the box at the bottom you can hit return and if you're lucky that will just go off and convert should take about half an hour to an hour depending on how large the original hard disk is once that's done you'll get this lovely completion message and then once you've done that you can load Hyper-V Manager and create a new virtual machine so once Hyper-V loads up you want to go to action new virtual machine On the before you begin page hit next and that's pretty straightforward so far. On the specify name and location page you simply want to specify a name and a location. So Windows 10 VM that will do and then hit next. Now here you can either select generation 1 or generation 2 virtual machine to be honest with you if you're using a new operating system i'd always go generation two but to be honest you can get away with generation one make your selection and hit next now it's time to assign the memory so we're not going to go too crazy you can do whatever you like and it's up to you whether you select use dynamic memory for virtual machine or not once you've made your mind up, hit next. And on the configure networking page, you want to select the drop down menu. And on my machine, I only have default switch to select. You might have a few more options. And hit next. Now we don't want to create a virtual hard disk because we just have, we've just converted one. So you want to select use an existing virtual hard disk. And obviously, if you need to browse to your location, do so. It should be in exactly the same location that you specified as your destination location when you're running the command in PowerShell. Once you've connected your virtual hard disk, you can hit next and hit finish. Now, hopefully you'll be able to just right click and start that virtual machine. But if you should happen to get a boot error, what you're going to need to do is attach an image or a CD-ROM with Windows 10 and launch a startup repair. That might happen. Some people do report that this happens. Um, if that is the case, it's so all you've got to do is boot from your Windows Media and launch a startup repair. Now, some people would have got an error message when they tried the convert. And if you're one of those people that got an error message, like so, when you tried to run the convert command in PowerShell, there is a workaround, but I do warn you it is a pain in the backside. So this error message has given us a bit of information. 
entry one is not supported this database entry for the descriptor and a bit more blurb so what we're going to need to do to try and sort this out if you happen to be one of the unlucky ones is do another google search for a bit of software called dsfok and then you want to download and extract dsfok tool you're going to need to go back into PowerShell, make sure you've loaded it as administrator. So once you're back in PowerShell, you want to type dsfok slash dsfo.exe space quotation marks, the location of the original VMDK file, close quotation marks, space 512 space 1024 space descriptor1.txt. Don't misspell it like I did. And then you want to hit return. Now you should get an OK message, which will tell you that that descriptor file has been written to a text file. If you browse to your C drive, you should be able to locate the file you just created. And then what you want to do is you want to open Notepad as administrator and then file open and navigate to the descriptor1.txt file. Now this is where you get to the good stuff. We want to comment out the offending line. Now we're getting an error message relating to this line here. And we know that because of the number beside it. So if we just put a hash byte and a space and hit file save, that should all save. We can close down the text document. And then what we need to do is we need to now write these changes back in. So we now go back to our PowerShell console, which was open in the background. And we now type V colon slash or whatever your location is, DSFOK slash DSFI.exe space quotation marks the location of your VMDK file, quotation marks, space 512, space 1024, space descriptor1.txt, hit return, and you should get an OK message to say that's been written back. And then hopefully, when you now go and run that initial command to convert the virtual machine, it should kick off with no errors. So let's just do that. You can push upwards on the keyboard if you typed it before to bring the command back. And then what we can do is either hit return to run it or select the line and hit the play button, the green play button at the top. And if your luck's in and you've done everything correctly, that should start converting. Once it's converted, as before, create a new virtual machine in Hyper-V, attach the new hard drive, Attach the new VHDX file and you're good to go. We've been Zany Geek. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Links to all of this stuff in the description box below, hopefully, if I haven't forgotten. And we'll see you next time.